Welcome to another CCR. This is the first time I'm trying these, these solder seal wire connectors kit. This is not a uh, name brand. This was just some cheap stuff. Basically what these things are, if you're unfamiliar with them, is it's heat shrink, glue, and solder all rolled into one to make connections nice and easy. I wouldn't trust these necessarily for anything that's hyper important, but sometimes you just gotta make a down and dirty connection like I have to do right now. I've gotta connect this ionizer to a just a zip cord to plug it in. So anyway, so according to these things, this is, I'm gonna guess it's about 18 gauge on both sides. So that means according to this little chart here, I need to use the red ones. So let's get a couple of red ones. I have not tried these before. I have no idea if they're gonna work. I know nothing basically. Um, one thing I am noticing right off the bat though, the 18 gauge may not actually fit and does not actually fit over the insulation. So how about we step it up to the next size, which is blue. Let's see if that'll work. Let's get a couple of blues out. And again, I have never used these. I've never used the name brand version. Just never used them, just wanted to try them. And I wanted to try them. I wanted us to discover together if these work. Because, you know, you'll see the failure or you'll see the victory. One way or another, you're gonna see something. And that, I suppose, is really all that matters. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to string these things over. <laughs> How many times have you made a connection and forgot to put the heat shrink tube on? I know, right? It's like 10,000 times. So this is a practical, real world kind of experiment. Um, you know, I'm just going to sort of twist these guys together here. Again, don't know if this is going to work. Have no idea. And now it's not just, we're not just trying, you know, a single random wire. This is actually something I do have to do and have been putting off because, well, I wasn't going to shoot a video about it, but I figured why not? Who doesn't love failure? So I watched a couple of videos. Big Clive has one. Uh, I'm sure a couple of other people have some. And I was reading the comments and they say, you know, use plenty of heat and you know, try some flux, which is what this thing is here. This is flux. So what we'll do is we'll put a little bit of, uh, this is the good stuff. This is Kester rosin. Get some in there. Now, everything I read says to use a lot of heat. Okay, I see I got one little wire going sideways. So I have my hot air gun set to something pretty high. I forgot what I set it to. We're about to find out though. Let's clear this out of the way. It's getting up to temperature and it is set to, well, it's at 200 degrees and climbing. Three hundred and climbing. It says the minimum temperature in the package for the solder to melt is, I think, 138 degrees Celsius. I think I may have this set to, yeah, I can feel it, 400 degrees. All right, so here we go. Let's just hit it. Let's shrink her up. I can see my rosin working itself out. Let's try to get some heat in there. This could be a fairly epic failure. Solder has not melted yet. The heat shrink has. Sorry, I'm doing this way out of frame. Because I'm trying not to fail. Solder is starting to melt. Well, that's pretty friggin' ugly. Let's see, let's put this thing away. Let us inspect. With the power of 4K, I will zoom in and post. That is positively hideous. That's horrific looking. I wouldn't show this to my worst enemy. However, as we let it cool down here, 
it's getting cool. The glue certainly is melted, and it did shrink down to the diameter of both wires. It appears to be a fairly solid connection. <laughs> I just had a mental sort of a, a, a thought here. Yeah, somebody's... Ooh, it's getting cloudy as it's cooling off. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, ugly, yes. Functional, possibly. We'll find out. So, let's try uh, the second one. I didn't really care for that sort of twisting technique. Or, it wasn't even twisted, actually. It was just kind of jammed together. So, let's see what we can do with this one. There's just no good way of doing this if you've got two wires next to each other. I don't know if this actually helped flow it. I do know that it kind of goobered out the side. I'm going to pay a little bit more attention on this one to the camera framing. If I can get this thing around without destroying my junction. Okay, looks like it's right about ready to rock. Let's get the heat gun. Let's let it get back up to temperature. It's over 300, 350, call that good enough, it'll stop at 400. If you don't have one of these things, they're actually like stupidly cheap. They used to be expensive, but they're dirt cheap. Obviously, like heat guns, the kind you'd use for stripping paint off the side of your house, you know, those kinds of things have uh, come way down in price, and so have these guys. Well, look at that. The solder is not melting at all on this one. I'm trying not to burn my forearm here. There's going to be a million comments. Do it this way. Do it this way. Do it this way. You know what? We're experimenting together. Oh, there goes the solder. Ooh, hasn't quite melted. It makes me wonder, like, at what point is the heat shrink going to fail? You can actually see it bubbling in there. I hope the detail shows up to that extreme. The other one kind of burned at that one point. Well, is it pretty? I'm going to say no, it's not. Oh, and I think I just burnt a hole in the heat shrink. All right. Glad I'm not doing this on anything that's important. Did I burn a hole in the heat shrink? Can't tell. Maybe I didn't. The heat shrink, I don't know if the heat shrink discolored or what actually discolored in there. That could just be the rosin that I flowed in. But um, let's let it cool down a little bit. And let's see. Still kind of mighty hot. I mean, you know what? They work, right? And I did not melt through the uh, heat shrink tubing, it looks like. It looks like that maintained its integrity. It's still kind of hot. This other one is pretty solid at this point. I mean, I can't pull it apart. It doesn't want to move. It feels solid. It actually feels like the solder, you know, crept in underneath the insulation. There is a... Uh, loose wire that kind of got stuck in the insulation but you know it is what it is this one is cooling off well you know there you have it never used them before i had the temperature on the air gun set to 400 degrees celsius it appears to work let's test it with this you know everything i do is dangerous that's an ozone generator and uh you know maybe i'll do videos on that too if you guys really want to know what that's for but uh, it generates high voltage. That's kind of all you need to know. So let's plug her in and see if I get electrocuted. Of course, you know, if I touch this, I will. Well, don't know about electrocuted, but shock. But let's try that the hard way. Of course, you can use a meter. You can, I don't know if you can hear that. But if this shocks me, nope. Well, there you go. It works. I'm unplugging this thing before I poison myself. 
there you go. So, uh, Queeba Oak brand from Amazon, 230 piece solder seal wire connectors kit for making a quick down and dirty set of connections that's insulated and waterproof and everything else. Yeah, they'll work. Would I use them under the hood of a car? No. But you know what? Did the job. And we didn't fail. Hey, step in the right direction. Subscribe.